The uh, process to making a country ham is not very difficult. You need a few easy to find ingredients such as salt, brown sugar, as well as what we refer to as a green ham. This is no, uh, no reference to Dr. Seuss, but uh, this is what the, the meats industry refers to as a green ham, which is an uncured hind leg of a pig. Now, the professional ham curers will tell you that the highest quality hams the highest quality country hams come from the freshest green hams. If you're doing this at home, this may not be possible as most grocery stores do not stock green hams or fresh uncured hams. Your best bet is to work with a local meat processor who can get you a green ham to begin with. Chances are when you get a ham, it's, it's a fairly sizable uh, piece of meat. Our harvest weights for pigs are running between 275 to 300 pounds, which is going to throw roughly a 23 to 25 pound uh, ham. And when you get it, a lot of times it's gonna be rough cut. For example, this flank fat right here can be taken off and basically get you a nice sharp knife, begin to kind of pull as you're, as you're cutting, trying to make a smooth cut there. And even come back here and kind of square it up a little bit more. All right, you really shouldn't need to adjust the ham collar at all. This is the, this curvature where the skin and the fat meet is called the ham collar. Uh, shouldn't need to adjust that at all. You may come across where loose pieces of fat or uh, meat are on the ham. You can trim those off as well. The length of the hock, on the other hand, is a personal preference. Some individuals like a longer hock, whereas uh, if you're just beginning, I would suggest a shorter hock. This is roughly around two and a half to three inches off the heel is where the hock meets the, uh, the ham. That's a good length of hock for the beginner to work with. The reason I suggest a two and a half to three inch hock, when a ham spoils during the curing process, it's generally this joint right here, which is often referred to as the stifle joint. And so the shorter the hock, the easier it is to get more cure in there so the cure can get to the stifle joint and cure it before it goes bad. The next ingredient you're going to need is your ham cure. Now, country hams are a, are a kind of a harken back to the way meat was cured before mechanical refrigeration. And so the, the basis of your ham cure needs to be salt. Uh, you can cure a ham with totally all salt, uh, but a lot of folks add other uh, ingredients to it as well. This is a basic ham cure that we use. It's uh, eight pounds of salt, two pounds of brown sugar. There's a little bit of uh, black pepper and red pepper as well, some paprika in there as well. Now, a question I often get is, can we do a sugar cure? Whenever you add sugar to your ham cure, that's what they're going to, it's what's considered a sugar cure. Do not mix up the, the ingredients where you're adding more sugar than salt or your ham will spoil. Uh, like I said, this is a, a basic ham cure. This is about 10 pounds of cure. We'll do about 100 pounds worth of green ham. Here we have two veterans of the 4-H Country Ham Project that are gonna help us apply the cure to these hams. We have set out what we need prior to the applying of the cure. We have our paper here, which is a, a, just a typical waxless butcher paper. A common mistake 4-Hers uh, and amateur ham curers make is getting butcher paper that is waxed. We want the moisture to escape from this ham, and a waxed paper will not allow the moisture to escape. You gotta realize these fresh hams are roughly 70 to 75% water, and we're gonna lower that percentage of water down to around 50, so we need a way for that to get away from the ham, that moisture to get away from the ham. Uh, other things that you can use, uh, grocery store paper bags work well for this, uh, this method of curing. Uh, another question we often get, can I use an old fertilizer bag or an old feed bag or something along those lines? It's not recommended, obviously fertilizer it contains some uh, chemicals that are toxic to human health, as well as if you use an old feed bag, chances are your ham's gonna taste like whatever feed was in there. We're gonna begin curing our ham by working on the hock of the ham. Our assistant here is gonna show you a, a good way to help get more cure into the hock is to gently start to separate the skin from the meat of, of, the, uh, of the hock as well as around the bone. Putting your fingers in there uh, just to gently separate those, uh, 
the, the membrane that surrounds the uh, skin and the meat there just so you can pack more cure in there. Now to begin with, she's gonna grab a, a couple handfuls of, uh, of cure and she's gonna start stuffing it in here. This is the most critical part of curing a ham is making sure you get enough cure into this hock as if a ham spoils during the curing process, typically it is, is lack of cure getting into the hock, getting into the stifle joint. The next step, once we get enough cure in the hock, usually about four or five tablespoons is enough to uh, begin the curing process in the hock. We're gonna take the remainder of the cure and we're gonna start to put it on all the lean, exposed lean portions of the ham, including the butt face and over here on the ham collar as well. And so the girls are gonna start applying the, the cure to it. And this is, this is not a very difficult part. You're just going to put it on there. Make sure you kind of pat it in there and rub it in there. Um, sometimes the cure, if you've got a, a dry cure, you can add a, just a little bit of water to it to make it feel like it's moist to the touch. Uh, and that'll help with the, the cure adhere to the hams as well. A good kind of tip is once you start the curing process, if your eyes itch or your nose itches, you might want to wash your hand before you do that. It, uh, there's enough salt and pepper on this that if you do scratch your eyes or itch your nose, that it, it's going to be quite painful. The next step is we've applied all the cure to our ham, is now we need to wrap the ham in the waxless paper that we started out with. To begin with, it's probably easiest to get your, your paper in kind of a diamond shape, bring your bottom corner over your shank, you're going to have a short side here, kind of fold that over like so. Bring your other corner over. And then we just start to bring the top over as well. And if a little bit of the ham is exposed, that's no problem. Once you've brought the corner over, a small piece of tape can be used to hold the paper in place. Next thing we're going to do is to kind of spin the ham around. Grab a ham sock. These can be purchased on the internet. They're commonly referred to as ham socks or ham sockinets. And what you want to do is there's a seam at the very end of the ham that you want to make sure goes straight across the hock. So just open up our ham sock, kind of slide it over. And once again, adjust it. Make sure you got your, your seam right over the end of your hock. And these ham socks fit tight, so and, but they will stretch. The next step we're going to do once we get the ham into the sock, and this is where if you're working with 4-H'ers, the younger kids may need some help as the ham is, is pretty heavy right now, is to start to shake the ham down into the sock holding the top. Okay? And then kind of bunch up your, your sock, and if you start to kind of smooth the ham skin upwards, that helps straighten out the skin that's underneath the ham. And once you get it to this part, once you get the ham to this part, it's ready to be hung in the barn and begin the curing process. Naturally, as the ham begins the curing process, which we describe the curing process as the cure, the salt and the sugar entering into the ham, you can see that it's already starting to push some of that water out. It roughly takes a, a ham about two days for every pound of ham for it to cure. Or a good rule of thumb is a ham this size will take approximately 60 days to cure. And so what you're going to see once it's hanging in the barn, and we're going to hang it with the hock pointed down as, as always so that we get this nice teardrop shape, the ham's going to start to lose moisture and it's very common to see puddles of water underneath the ham as they're hanging in the ham house. That's very common, don't panic, that's what we want to happen. But Basically what's happening now is that salt and that sugar mixture is penetrating the muscles and the skin of that ham. Now what you're not going to see is the peppers that we've added to here. They're too big to enter the ham. They're going to stay on the surface and they're going to contribute to the overall color of the finished ham. 
Our hams have been curing for approximately 60 plus days in cooler temperatures or if you're doing an ambient cure over the winter and spring rolls around, it's time to what we call shuck the ham. We're going to remove the ham sock, we're going to remove the old paper, put a brand new sock on the hams and allow them to go through the summer sweat. As you can see, the girls have uncovered the hams, they've taken the old paper off, and if you remember how much cure we applied to the hams at the beginning of the curing process versus the end of the process, you can see that the only thing left is some paprika, some red pepper, a little bit of red pepper, red pepper flake it was a cure used in this ham. You can see how much of that has penetrated the ham over the, over the last 60 days, and the red pepper and the black pepper and the paprika stay on the surface. Another common thing that you will see, especially when we have a moist winter or hams are in a moist environment, you'll see the mold beginning to grow on those. It's, it's a harmless mold. It's actually mainly a penicillin type mold. Um, it can be easily cleaned off. It's, it's no big deal. Just remember that these type of molds that don't, don't produce toxins are easily brushed off. Once the paper's off the ham and the ham is cleaned, uh, it's time to put a brand new sock on, as you can see we've done here. Once again, paying careful attention, we've got the seam right over the face of the hock there so that the ham sits straight and we get that nice teardrop shape. Uh, if you're doing it at home, this is a time that the ham could be smoked, although in Kentucky, hams are either smoked or unsmoked, but if you're smoking a ham, Please be careful, this is a cold smoke for these hams, so what you're going to do is, is make sure your smoker does not get above 100 to 105 degrees, and you can smoke it for however long you want. Uh, common is, is 12 to 24 hours, although, although we have heard of individuals smoking for greater than 36 hours. And basically what we're gonna do is rehang the ham, once again, making sure that we get the hock pointed straight down. This one's just a little lopsided here. We'll get him kind of straightened out. Okay. We're gonna rehang the ham and he's gonna go through the summer sweat. This is where he's fully cured right now. This is where he's gonna to start to develop his characteristic country ham flavor and aroma as the enzymes start to break down the fats and proteins in this ham. He's gonna, he's gonna develop those characteristic flavors and aroma. Here are the aging rooms at the University of Kentucky. We try to maintain the temperature in our aging rooms at roughly 70 to, 70 to 75 degrees, which is going to help produce that characteristic country ham flavor and aroma. One of the things that we can do at UK is control the humidity in these rooms. We try to maintain a relative humidity of around 60% which prevents some mold growth, mainly so that we don't have to clean the mold off of the finished ham. We will age our hams anywhere from six months to nine months. So what you're viewing here, most of the hams in this room are roughly around nine months old.